every Thursday. We are going to read from uh, the letter to Romans, chapter 9 and verse 30. The gospel, uh, the the letter to Romans, chapter nine and verse thirty. What then shall we say that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith? But Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, has not attained it. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were by work by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written. See a lay in Zion and stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him will be, never be put to shame. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous of, for God. But their zeal is not based on knowledge, since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and is in your heart. That is, the word of faith we proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that it confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all Israelites accept the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? <coughs> Consequently, faith comes from the hearing of the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen. Apostle Paul, with absolute certainty about the things that the word of God says, as we know that this word of God and this Bible is not coming from a person, but God. Christ himself was speaking about for three and a half years he brought it over we're talking about the New Testament of course he brought it over to uh, the people of Israel and then Paul heard it in Arabia from Christ and he was taught by Christ that very word and because of it now he has the boldness to speak out and say that the things that I'm talking to you about they're not revealed to me by a person but by Christ himself and that is giving him that boldness to know that he's not mistaken whatever is written in the book of of God from his word whether that is the the letter especially the letters sent out to the ch to the churches we know that is from God. In other words, the illumination of God himself came down to the people that wrote that letter and 
every book in the Bible. And that has a result. That word, because it's from God, it has a result. It's profitable, able to make, prog to make you progress in your life. In other words, the person that is reading uh, from the Old and the New Testament, that person that is going through and studies these books is able to pro progress with the Old Testament, of course, uh, for the edification of the gospel, but the New Testament as well for his salvation. As with the... The person of God is able to read through the Bible how he is able to be saved. And that while he is in the bottomless pit of sin. And wondering who is going to be able to save him from uh, the sin, the sinful life that he's in. With that certainty of the truthfulness of the gospel, therefore, Apostle Paul says something that is very difficult for us to understand indeed. The Word of God says, Apostle Paul says, through God, says that God is able to, to harden the heart and bring mercy unto the person that He is willing. And that Word actually means that God can do as He pleases, and that is the case. Indeed, God does as He pleases. But is that righteous? That's the next question. When God confirms with his, uh, confirms himself that I will bring mercy and grace to the person that I'm willing to bring these uh, talents and uh, blessings to, that means that uh, the person can think that God is unjust. But Apostle Paul continues on to eliminate um, that question. And he says that this has nothing to do with righteousness or not from God. Because God wants everyone to be saved. God is calling every single person, as he says that I loved you with eternal love, I drew you near with mercy, and now are you going to accept that invitation that God has sent to you? Are you going to accept that love that God is giving for, f to you? And how can you accept that invitation? That is only, there's only one way, and, there's, and that is the critical point. God is giving you a nice gift. He's giving you faith. And that faith is that you are now able to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That Jesus Christ is the Word of God in flesh. That Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, your teacher and master. And the result of that is very critical indeed. You and I, and every single one of us personally, need to question ourselves. Who is our teacher? Who is our master? Because the Word of God says that God, as He wanted to show His wrath and His power, He was patient with people that were vessels that were going towards damnation. He tried to even save people that have been edified from other people, not God. From different doctrines. And that would have a result of them being uh, eternally damned. But they are also vessels of mercy. Vessels that have been edified by God Himself. And God wants to teach every single person. The question is, who is your teacher and master? That's the critical point. And the vessels, as we said before, of mercy, that are being taught and edified by God and Christ, and they are getting ready. God is getting these people ready for the time of rapture. When that time comes, they will be ready to be revealed in glory. And we, of course, are talking about the people of God. The critical question, therefore, is again, who is teaching you? Who is edifying you? And the, the answer is that I'm being taught by the one I want to be taught. And of course, I want the Word of God to be the one that is teaching me. Why? Because the Word of God says that your Word is right next to you, it's close to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. It, can, it cannot be closer than that. 
and let us see uh, more into that. The Word of God says that you need to humble yourself underneath God. Are you going to be obedient to God? The Word of God says that I loved you with eternal love. I drew you near with mercy. I'm now inviting you. Are you going to be obedient to God? You might say that I don't want to be obedient to the Word of God. Or you might say that I do want to be obedient to the Word of God. And if you do, if you are obedient to the Word of God, you are then standing up against the serious problem that is the flaming arrows of the enemy that are trying to ruin your faith to God, your, to ruin your faith to Jesus Christ. That is why you need to be obedient to the Word of God. And then the most important, one uh, more important step is for you to stand against the enemy and defend against them. Sometimes it's very easy because the enemy is coming close as an angel of light or s someone that knows the word of God very well and his purpose is to lead you to sin and false doctrine to, lo to make you lose your temper and you would lose your temper against, against God and when you lose your temper against your brother you do so against God as well because in in your brother God exists and God is present and that is what he's aiming for the the enemy of your soul that is and Eve was destroyed by it and people are falling into that trap and Christians as well every single day why because the commandment of God is to love one another as I loved you and if you don't love one another as Christ loved you then you are coming to church in vain there's no real purpose for you coming to the church. And how am I supposed to love my brother as Christ loved me? The answer is only through the Spirit. There's no other way. The first thing, therefore, that we are doing is that we need to search out and find who amongst our brothers we do not like excuse me for the saying but that's the truth you need to search out and find any brother that you are not loving enough as Christ loved you because that will be your detriment and that will be your obstacle in you coming into the to eternal life entering into it you may be even right but that's not the point because God is the only one who is right we are faulty in many things there's no one that is righteous because the righteousness of people is like a dirty cloth. But he said to me this, this and that. It doesn't matter. If you don't love your brother, you're not going to enter into eternal life. It doesn't matter what happens in the world. And what does it mean for you to love him properly? You need to pray for him so that Christ may bless him more than you. You need to forgive him. Because God has forgiven us millions of talents, can we not give away this ten denarii? As, uh, as it may be the case that you need them, but you need to give them away. And know this, that if you give one hundred to them, to him, to your brother or sister, God is going to give you more back. Because God is going to act according to His own righteousness, not yours. That is why you need to be careful. Who are you going to bring mercy to God? You need to be merciful to the person that is being edified by God. Study those and remain to this. Studying the Word of God so that you may remain. Not for you to study the Word of God and just forget about it. You need to study the Word of God and remain to it. And you need to pay attention to your own self. You might think to yourself that I'm a good uh, preacher, I'm a good pastor. I'm saying things that are very nice and wise. Instead, you need to think differently. I am no one. If God wouldn't bring that talent, and that if God wouldn't bring His grace onto my life, I wouldn't be nothing. I'm not prophesying. I'm not preaching by myself. I will be. It will be to my demise if I have that kind of mindset. If I think that. I'm praying and if I'm thinking that I'm preaching and I'm prophesizing you're going to be casted outside you cannot play with God because God cannot be played with if you if you saw in the flesh 
and you do as you desire or whatever you believe you're gonna saw uh, problems and issues only if uh, you're gonna reap destruction only if you saw in the spirit you're gonna reap great results and if you study those and remain to this and pay attention to your doctrine then you're gonna save yourself and the ones who are listening to you because God wants to use you and people need to listen to you the Word of God says that to my servants I'm gonna bring down from my spirit so that they may prophesy however this, there's need there's need there's a need for order in the church it doesn't mean that your sermon is from your heart your work is from your heart only the people that have been directed by the Spirit of God are indeed truly the sons of God therefore we need to be guided we need to be directed by the Spirit of God I'm not preaching whenever I want I'm not prophesizing whenever I want but when God wants me to and I wanna make sure that I stress that out when we are in the communion of the Spirit of the body and blood of Christ we're not prophesizing but we are we are praying so that God may bless us so that we may partake in a righteous manner in a proper manner we are supposed to prophesy when we are praying whenever the church is praying we're not supposed to be praying when the sermon is going on we're not supposed to pray to prophesy in the minute on uh, that we are participating in the communion and there was a vision that was signed to a sister and she saw that the heavens were open up and you saw it and she saw everyone and everything to be standing still because they were paying attention to the communion of God you are not supposed to prophesy at that moment because if you do know that it's not the spirit prophesizing you prophesizing from yourself may God protect us we need to have the order of Christ in our life he when we listen to the Word of God are we gonna is our heart gonna be hardened or is it gonna become tender more tender if someone says that the preacher is talking about me and hundreds his heart then he would eventually lose because no one is talking about anyone and that means that you are a vessel of not proper use my God protect us you need to know who's edifying you if it is God with his own word through the Spirit then you're gonna be a vessel of good use and you're gonna be used for the work of God if you are being edified by the enemy of your soul and your heart is hardened and you are struggling and you are becoming aggravated with the Word of God then eventually you're gonna lose your road and your path unless you manage to repent on time and in time because if when we do God is able to forgive us and when we and when we ask from the Lord to help us out so that we may not fall into the same issue God will help the other thing is how are you acting in your house in your household are we acting accordingly to the Word of God or are we acting according to our own logic because if we do act in our, according to our logic we're gonna lose our children are we uh, reading together all together if you wait for your child to to reach the age of 20 or 25 you're gonna lose it from a young age you need to have a household um, study and I know someone who was reading the Word of God to her little daughter to his little daughter from a young age and there was a question it was the girl understanding and the answer is of course he does of course the baby the, the, the young person understands maybe sometimes we don't understand because the Word of God says that if you don't become like children you won't enter the kingdom of God 
we need. We need to have these things in our household life because we're going to lose the presence of God and our children. We need to study all together, pray all together, go to the church all together. We are not supposed to be happy if our children comes to the, come to the church and come to the gatherings of the youths. Th- these are good things and you need to, to do them and pay it, uh, be present. But we need to move one step forward. We need to edify and... Uh, Test our children according to the Word of God. Because they won't listen to you otherwise. Because they're going to be edified by the enemy of their souls. And the child won't listen to you because you didn't teach your child from a young age. You didn't pray with your child. And now his heart or her heart is hardened. Of course, through the cleanness of your hands, you be able to save the ones that were righteously captured the that means that you need to pay attention to your holification so that your hands what does it mean when we say your hands we're talking about your mind your heart and your body your mind is the way your paths your heart is what you want what you desire and your body is what you're working for in the church of god that is you need to be holy and then if that is the case when your hands are clean you'll be able to save the ones that were righteously captured and you're going to save them the ones that were righteously captured but if you don't pay attention to it then you won't be able to save anyone if you are hardened no one will be able to be saved from you whether that is your wife your husband your children your your parents it doesn't matter because God is exalted because of your fruition and then you are the disciple of God then God is edifying you and when God is edifying you then God is also able to bring mercy into your life because he is able to be present in your life and now Apostle Paul comes along to say this now consider this says Apostle Paul that there are the people of Israel and there are the uh, nations the Gentiles, the people of Israel know about Christ. He saw miracles being performed by him. He saw Abraham, Jacob, he saw David, he saw the prophets. The people of Israel knew exactly when Messiah is going to come. The Messiah came, but they didn't believe in him. For them, the Messiah was a stone a stumbling stone that young man 30 years of age he is the word of God in flesh and they are right to think in that way they are Lord this is a logical question isn't it the issue is that they didn't allow Christ to come into their hearts with his love they didn't allow him They didn't draw near to God they didn't ask him they didn't request for 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 they didn't petition for an answer and the result is that the people of Israel who pursued a law of righteousness that is in verse 31 has not attained it but the nations the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it why because the Gentiles believed accepted the gift of God and that is that gift is the faith but the people of Israel didn't and now we are entering in our own person lives do you believe in the word of God or not are you believing just to the parts that you like or are you believing to the word of God from A to uh, to Omega because God is the Alpha and Omega why are you hardening your heart why are you being aggravated why are you slandering against brothers why are you passing judgments, judgment onto others? And that could be from the least of you know, passing judgment from the, sm- the, the insignificant part to the very, to the very harsh punishment. Uh, he, that brother doesn't love me. That brother is not faithful. Have you ever heard this? The church is not loving enough. That is not accurate. You are not loving enough. That's the answer. Because there is love in the church. And if someone has fallen, he will be raised up. Because the word of God says that even if I fall, 
let my enemy not be happy and rejoicing about it because I'm going to ra- rise myself up again. And if you're passing judgment onto others, you're going to be judged yourself. And you're going to see your own life going from bad to worse. And you're going to ask yourself, why? And you won't receive an answer. And it is very important indeed. We need to act accordingly to the Word of God. I didn't plan on saying this, but I was praying the other night. And... I was thinking to myself that I didn't. I, I had a. I have had a lot of time to bring uh, elders to pray for me and my wife, and le- and I thought to myself, let me bring some elders. And God came along and said, "Do not call anyone. You need to step forward. You need to step forward and ask for the elders to bless you in the church." And you need to have four main petitions. Firstly, you need to ask for the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God in your life. Second petition, you need to ask for health, spiritual and uh, carnal health, bodily health. Third petition is for you to have the ability and the power to serve your brothers until the end. And the last petition is for God to allow you and help you out so that you may enter richly into the kingdom of God. You're not supposed to call them. You're gonna. You're supposed to kneel down here in this church and the elders are going to gather around you and pray for you for these four main petitions of yours. And when I got up from uh, my prayer I was studying I was asking to to, to see uh, and find a fifth petition but I couldn't find that is why after we finish with uh, the the, uh, the people that are in need and we pray for them let us let the elders remain and we are going to come forward and we're going to pray to God and the elders to come and pray for us so that God may give us these petitions answer to these petitions because the end is near and God is coming and we want to be prepared for the kingdom of God we don't want to do as we please we want to do as God wants us to do that is why the question remains why didn't the people of Israel receive uh, the righteousness that we're looking for because they didn't believe that happened to me and the question then is do you believe George and believing is that that you know that God is going to act to it and we are sure that God is going to do it and I surely hope that the elders are going to come and help us with it as well and God is going to reply in our petitions of course and we will never cease praying. Of course, then, I thought that this is a very nice example, isn't it? Anyone who wants it, he can try it. Why did God say these words to me? Is it because I'm better? The answer is no. But the answer is because I needed it. Therefore, my question is, am I the only one who needs it? He whoever thinks that he needs it he would do very well in uh, doing the same. I'm just confirming. I'm not uh, telling you what to do. I'm just confirming my experiences. That is why the nations, the Gentiles, did attain and obtain the righteousness uh, through faith. And our Apostle Paul comes along with that knowledge now that Jesus Christ, for the people of Israel, became a stumbling stone But for the nations, that same Jesus became King of kings and Lord of lords, their teacher and saviour. What about you? What is Christ for you today? Do you believe? I believe. And I want Christ for me to be my King of kings and Lord of lords. I know nothing more and nothing less.
and Apostle Paul comes along, a person that loves the Israelites and says to them, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for the Israelites so that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. They do have zeal for God. Zeal of God, it means that they are willing to act accordingly to the Word of God. But there's one thing missing, and that is the understanding of the Word of God. The true understanding of the truth, that is what that zeal means. And what is that understanding of the truth? That deep understanding of the truth is that the Israelites had the law of Moses. But the end of that law came when Jesus Christ came down to earth. Jesus Christ came to end and put an end to the Old Testament. We are dead for that law. We are dead for sin. From, uh, for sin, yes. Because through Jesus, and he gave what God wanted the Israelites to have, without the law because Moses said that he who acts according to the word of God he will live but there's also someone else there's, but there's no one actually that would ever uh, do and uh, obey to the commandments to the very detail every single one of them because we are faulty many things can you work and uh, do accordingly to the word of God only three people we know that they were able to do them Noah Job uh, and Daniel but if we read for uh, their stories we're going to see that they're gonna, they went through so many difficulties but we now in the New Testament we are going to go to heavens through the grace of God we are here in this church because of the grace of God not because we acted accordingly to it God was gracious to us and we came some of us came from uh, close uh, the, the, the they had a great distance uh, by car. The camps, the other, other came were, they were closer. But the main point is that you are not supposed to say that I came here by myself. No. God put that in your heart. You accepted it. You took the decision and you came. We have a brother in the midst of us that he is going to be baptized today. Did anyone tell tell him to uh, be baptized? And if anyone did, would he listen to us or him? How did he make such a uh, decision? Uh, same happened on Sunday. Who told our sister to be baptized on Sunday? Did I? And even if I did, would it make any difference? Can I intervene into the heart of a person? not even able to take care of my own heart. I cannot control my own heart. How much more the hearts of others. I only can't give myself up to God. The same apply to the same applies to every single brother and sister in the midst of us. And these people now are coming gladly to do so. They're not saying to themselves that we are supposed unfortunately we're supposed to uh, be baptized in the water. But instead, with great joy, they said to me that on Sunday, I'm supposed and I want to be baptized in the water. And the same applies for the brother that is to be baptized today. These are the actions of God in his church. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. And Apostle Paul continues on to say, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep. Let not your heart be fooled, so that you may say who will send me, who will ascend into heaven to bring uh, Christ down for me, so that I may know Him, get to know Him, or who is going to descend down to the deep and bring Christ up, because Christ came from heaven and also went. Uh, to the into the deep when he was dead to preach to the spirits in Hades you don't need to do that you just need to read and study the word of God because the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart you don't need to go through all this trouble you have the word of God right next to you and this is now the critical point as God showed me this 
what happened? What is the thing that is in your heart and in your mouth? Is it the Word of God or is it your anger, your emotions, your opinion, your way of thinking? The Word of God says that if the Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, the Word of God that is, then you're going to be able to be saved because you believe and we believe with our heart. And these verses are very nice. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, in other words, you, be, you accept and you believe in Christ and with your mouth you confirm that and that is through the baptizing in the water. The brother that is, that is baptized today, he is going to be saved once he is baptized. Do you understand what happens today? Christ is going to write in the book of life the name of the brother that is to be baptized. And the whole heavens are going to be, is going to be rejoicing because that person believed. And his name was written to the book of life. And the angels are going to exalt God. And the next question is, is that person so important? And the answer is yes. Every single one of the people that are be saved are, are important. The same applied on Sunday. But we need to know something else. That the enemy is going to bring uh, obstacles to the road. But the easiest thing is for you to defeat the enemy. You need to just say, "Go, get behind me, Satan, because I have decided to act accordingly to the word of God. Because I have taken the decision to act according to the Word of God. And the next thing is, maybe if my father learns about it, or my household learns about it, or if my relatives learn about this, maybe I shouldn't do it. The answer is no. You need to praise the Word of God and allow God to show you what He's going to do in your life from now, from now onwards. And if you pay attention that your hands are clean, through that cleanness of your hands, you are going to be able to save the ones that were righteously captured. And that cleanness of your hands means holification, as we said before, of your soul, your mind, and your spirit. Not as you desire because the word of God says that your will is not my will and your path is not my path and this is something very important and I told you about this last, last Sunday uh, I was terrified about it I saw the darkness in the world and I saw people being in a terrifying situation being in the bottomless pit of sin like like pigs going into the darkness and into the mud and I saw people that I, li I loved and I knew. And I said to myself that from up here, I'm not able to do anything. And the answer came in right away. You need to pray for them. And through the cleanness of your hands, you are going to be able to save the ones that were righteously captured. You need to pay attention to your holification, firstly, because you are going to become able uh, to have your hands clean because you are the husband or the wife or the father and the mother with your cleanness of the ha the cleanness of your hands your f daughter and your um your child is going to be saved and all of a sudden in that vision i saw a thunder coming down right on top of that person right in the heart of a person that i knew and that person caught on fire and when I'm talking about fire, I'm, t I'm s talking about great fire. And when that was the case, immediately he transformed and came right next to me. And that is the answer. Through the cleanness of your hands, the ones that were righteously captured are going to be saved. What is in your body? That is how you're going to see in your, uh, if, you are have, if you're having clean hands. What is in your body? Are you aggravated? Are you ready to quarrel? Or are you loving? Are you forgiving or are you patient? And the Word of God says that because you kept my word of perseverance, I'm going to keep you for the hour of the temptation. You need to be patient. Do you know what He did to me? You need to be patient. You need to forgive. You need to understand and comprehend that God has forgiven to you a million talents. Can you just give out 
10 denarii and maybe you need them but it doesn't matter remember how much God gave you back for free and also for the things that you're gonna give God is gonna give you much more back when uh, the prison guard asked what am I supposed to do to be saved the apostles reply believe in the name of God and you'll be saved in your household and God is not taking parts God is not just saying different things to one and different different things to another God is love and God loves Paul God loves Silas God loves the prison God but he also loves you and he's gonna give forward an earthquake so that the chains may fall and that is why we need to understand that if in on your mouth there's the Word of God and in your heart you see the Word of God if with your heart you believe that uh, you believe in God then you're gonna be righteous in front of the eyes of God and if your mouth ex confirms the Word of God then your name is gonna be written in the book of life because it is written he who believes in his name he will not be put to shame and what really matters is that there's no difference between people whether they are Gentiles or from Israel anyone who calls upon the name of Christ will be saved yeah but the Word of God only saves the Israelites the answer no he only saves the Pentecostal ones no the Word of God is saving the ones that believe in the name of Christ that he is their Lord and Savior and they confirm that Jesus Christ is the master and, and teacher these are the people that are being saved and as you are being saved you can also be transformed into a servant of God to a servant and maid servant of God and Christ is going to do that for you so that you may be able to save you through the cleanness of your hands you will be able to save the ones that were righteously captured the ones that are not innocent can you understand the importance of it? Think to yourself, the greatest of sinners in your relatives, in your household, write them down in a paper. I'm going to do this. I haven't done that yet, but I will do it. Uh, write them down in a paper. Write their names down. Who are the ones that you want to you want to save, or you want them to be saved? Rather, even better, write them down in a paper. Uh, be and pray to God be filled with the Spirit of God and start praying for them as you before that um, forgive the sins of others unto you you call upon the blood of Christ to cleanse you because if you don't forgive others your father will not be able to forgive you as well is that is very important and indeed you need to forgive others so that God can then forgive you and then indeed you're going to be able to be baptized f filled with the spirit rather and as you are brought to the throne of god to the throne of the grace of god and you're not going to do it by yourself christ is going to do it through the spirit as he is going to cleanse you with his blood and from there you're going to receive mercy do you understand what it mer what mercy means do you understand what it means for you to have the mercy of god in your life we are not worthy of it we don't deserve it Do you understand what it means for the mercy of God to to help you out? In the code of the world, the the, the word of God and the spirit of God is going to be like a, uh, a thermal blanket around you. Uh, if I may give you an example, the, the spirit of God is able to help you out as a shield against sin. You're going to receive that mercy in front of the throne of God. You You are not worthy of it but you're going to be filled with it once you go up there and also you're going to receive the grace of God you're going to find grace for the time of need the way that you're going to live your life today and tomorrow grace of God it means that God is going to forgive you even though that you're not worthy of it you will be having the grace of God for the time of need you're gonna fall you're gonna make a mistake but God is gonna uh, forgive you because of his grace do you understand how important it is and what unfolds from that moment onwards God is gonna perform miracles in your life 
great mysteries. And that will not be the case for just some of us, but that will be the case for, for the servants of God. Because the Word of God says that to my servants, I'm going to pour down from my spirit so that they can prophesy. And these servants are the people that say that I am indeed a servant. The answer is no. The servant of God is the person that is acting according to the Word of God and he's doing according to the will of God. In other words, he's being directed by the Spirit of God. In other words, he's asking God what to do. He's not doing according to his own opinion or what he thinks or what he likes or whatever he desires, but he is patient. He is forgiving. Even if he makes some mistakes, and I've made many, are you going to pass judgment onto me or are you going to forgive me? And I said before, if someone comes and says and, and brings slanderness and, and speak bad, speaks badly against someone, I say to him that you are mistaken. Why are you uh, passing judgment against others? If you are coming to confirm the mistake of one brother so that we can together pray for it together and so that that can be uh, redirected and fixed then then indeed that's a nice thing for you to do because we're not supposed to pass judgment we're supposed to help out we're supposed to forgive we're supposed to uh, persevere may God help us out because we cannot play around with God let me tell you also this as I conclude, God is coming quickly, and you know this very well. You see what happens outside of the church? Now we have the thing with China and Taiwan, Israel, Egypt. The next step is Gog and Magog, but that will take place after the rapture of the church. Before the rapture of the church, the way has to be opened from the people from the north to go down to Israel. The the Turkey is going to be destroyed. It's going to be the east and the west. And the at the end, the, the, the Turkish nation will be the pathway for the Russians. But the question is, are we going to be ready for Christ? Are we going to be ready for the rapture of the church? And the greatest question is, are you and I personally going to be able uh, to stay? That is why we have the I have these four petitions. And I'm repeating them so that you may remember them. So you might petition for them as well. Firstly, ask for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Second petition, health in the body and in the spirit. Thirdly, to pray, to uh, serve God and my brothers and my sisters until the end of my life. And last to enter into the kingdom of God richly through the gates because of the grace of God. Amen.